Hey folks, how's it going? This is Wadjo. Hope you guys are all doing well. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you on how to make a epic 4K gaming PC that will not only be great for playing all of your games at the highest resolution possible, but will also serve as a fantastically fast productivity machine for tasks such as uh, photo editing, video editing, and anything else you can throw at it. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and skip ahead to a specific part of the video since this is a full on build guide by using this little handy side menu. But basically, for the computer we're going to be using the latest and greatest components uh, we're using the 6700 uh, skylake processor as well as the gtx 980 ti from gigabyte as well as a very fancy pci express card for our flash memory storage from intel so basically if you want the best of the best this is probably one of the best computers that you're going to find out there and uh, let's get right into it and see what it takes to build this thing Now in terms of the parts that we're going to be using to make this epic PC, we're basing everything around the Intel Core i7-6700K. This is obviously built around the 14 nanometer Skylake architecture. It uh, has a built-in HD integrated graphics, although we're going to be using a discrete graphics card because we're going to be doing a lot of 4K gaming on this as well as some uh, photo and video editing. In terms of its uh, base uh, clock speed, it's uh, clocked around 4 gigahertz from the factory, but of course we're going to be overclocking this thing uh, to the max. Uh, per Perhaps we can hit 5 gigahertz with the cooler that we've selected. Now, speaking of the cooler, we're using the Corsair Hydro Series H100i GTX. This is basically another all-in-one liquid cooling solution from Corsair. It comes with a 240 millimeter radiator, so we have plenty of surface area for heat dissipation. As well as this CPU cooler has a Corsair Link built in, so you can monitor your CPU temps, fan speeds, and adjust all your different parameters for the cooler within your desktop. So that's kind of awesome as well. Now I could definitely understand that for some people that want to get the most overclocking performance out of the 6700K to use a custom water cooling solution, but you really can't beat what Corsair is offering at this price range. Now in terms of RAM, we have 16 gigabytes of LPX memory from Corsair. This is obviously DDR4 spec and it can be clocked at 3200 megahertz, which is pretty darn insanely fast. Uh, unfortunately, when you are going to move up to the new Skylake processors, you're going to have to get DDR4 memory, which is is definitely going to add a little bit to your RAM cost than your conventional GDR3 memory. Now in terms of our motherboard we're using Asus Z17 Deluxe. This board supports socket 1151 for the new 6th generation Intel CPUs. Some of the awesome features about this board is you have full support for M.2 at 4x speeds. You also have a 6 6 gigabit SATA connection so plenty of speed for all your SSDs as well as two uh, PCIe 3.0 slash 2.0 16x expansion slots so you can pretty much fit any kind of graphics card that you can imagine. Uh, additionally you have plenty of USB type 3 connections as well as one USB type C connection which is that new reversible USB connections. And alongside those and several other features I think this board is going to be pretty future proof for the next couple of years. Now in terms of the storage configuration we're going to keep things as simple as possible. I'm just using the Intel uh, 750 series add-in card. This is a 400 gigabyte PC PCIe SSD drive that is probably one of the fastest SSDs you can buy in the market. It has a uh, data sequential throughput of about uh, two gigabytes per second in terms of read speeds and over 900 megabytes uh, per second when it comes to the write speed. So pretty darn incredible performance over here. And with 400 gigabytes, I should be okay when it comes to loading most of my software and anything in terms of long-term storage, I'm gonna just pull off my NAS server anyways. So I'm not gonna bother in putting a mechanical hard drive in this computer for now. Now in terms of the graphics cards, I'm going with pretty much the best thing that you can get right now, which is the Gigabyte version of the GTX 980 Ti. We've done a couple of videos on this card over here. It's pretty darn incredible in terms of single GPU performance, and it's able to handle a lot of games at Ultra HD 4K resolutions at a decent playable frame rate. So definitely a great card to have if you're looking for high-end, high-resolution gaming performance. Now winding down our parts list in terms of our PSU, I'm using an EVGA Super Nova 750 watt a power supply. This is an 80 plus bronze certified power supply. So even though it's not technically gold certified, I think in terms of efficiency, it should be more than adequate for most of our parts over here. Additionally, it's a half modular power supply. So it's always connected to the motherboard power connection as well as the CPU, which you're going to 
use anyways and then you can connect uh, extra six pin or eight pin power connectors to your graphics card or whatever you need and uh, it'll definitely make uh, cable management a little bit easier as well now in terms of our case i'm using one of my favorite cases in the market right now which is specifically the graphite 780t from corsair now we've actually wrapped it in a carbon fiber vinyl wrap we actually made a video on how to wrap your own pc case so definitely check out that video if you haven't already but i think with the combination of all these amazing parts and this pc case we're going to have something really special at the end over here now the ground total for all this goodness comes to just under 2400 dollars now keep in mind that we are using fairly high components on pretty much every area when it comes to the cpu the gpu the ssd system you can certainly save and cut some cost depending upon where you don't need that extra performance perhaps you're going to be focused mostly on 4k gaming in that case you probably don't need a 6700k you can go with a core i5 6600k and you'll pretty much get very similar performance and again the great thing about building your pc is you get to choose the parts and check out the description down below you'll find the detail pricing and specifications to everything we're using to make this computer now let's finally build this beast over here now the main weapon of choice of building any computer is basically a phillips head screwdriver you really don't need anything else it's perhaps a good idea to have a pair of side cutters and needle nose pliers for different things but generally speaking phillips head screwdriver will pretty much be adequate for 99 percent of everything you're going to do here now the first thing you want to do is relieve yourself of any kind of static discharge so that way you don't fry your uh, components uh, as soon as you touch them so you could do this in a number of ways you can use an electrostatic wrist strap or do what i do is touch a computer case that's connected to the power and just make sure you're grounded properly now the first step is we're going to just take our uh, motherboard box and place the motherboard right on top of the box as a good kind of platform to get everything going we're going to install the ram first so it's pretty simple and straightforward you want to open up the tabs on the ram slots align each of the modules by matching the key in the slot with the notch on the stick itself and then go ahead and press firmly and evenly on both sides of the ram stick to insert it into the slot and then the tab closes automatically once the ram is sitting properly and since we're going to be populating all four slots on our motherboard it's pretty simple and straightforward just repeat the steps until you have filled up all your ram slots next let's finally install our cpu so the first thing we're going to do is take off the cover that's covering our 1151 socket on the motherboard itself now what we want to do is open up the cpu retention plate and you want to do this by pressing in the retention arm to the bottom and then move it away from the socket itself and once you do that you'll see that the retention plate will lift up very easily then take your cpu and hold it by the edges and you want to find the little gold triangle that's on the cpu itself and then match it with the triangle that's on the cpu socket itself this is pretty easy to do it only really goes in one way and there's also two little notches on the the top left and right side of the uh, cpu to make sure your alignment is just perfect so just be careful be patient and you should be fine once you've placed the cpu in your socket go ahead and close the retention plate and then go ahead and clamp down the retention arm in the reverse order that you opened it pretty simple and straightforward and now you have the cpu installed okay so the next step is getting our case ready just take off the two side panels on your case and we want to take the uh, back io plate that comes with your motherboard make sure the plate is aligned correctly based on your motherboard orientation and uh, simply just insert it at the back of the case i find it easier to use the handle of the screwdriver to kind of hammer it into place gently now once the back plate is installed you can go ahead and place your motherboard into your case and you can use that back plate to kind of align everything perfectly and once you manage to get your motherboard in you want to use basically nine screws to secure the perimeter of the board and it really depends on the size of the board but generally most cases uh, will accommodate you with all the screws that you're going to need to secure your motherboard down to your case once your motherboard is secured to your case you can now install some of the connections from the case to the motherboard itself i'm going to start with uh, my front panel connectors this is a little bit tricky but usually the uh, motherboard actually comes with a little handy connector that will make sure that you align each of the little connections to your power led light your hard drive activity light your restart your power switch etc check out the uh, manual if you want more detailed information about what each a uh, little thing does and how to connect everything to everything but it's pretty self-explanatory once you've connected all the essential uh, little connectors uh, to the large uh, adapter you can take that uh, large header and 
connected directly onto the motherboard and it really goes in one way so pretty simple and straightforward there once you've done that you can go ahead and connect your front panel uh, usb 3.0 connections to the motherboard as well as the 2.0 connections and you can also connect your hd audio connection for your headphone and microphone jack at the front of the case now after we've done that we're going to install our cpu water cooler so the first thing you want to do is install the back plate so i uh, take the back plate itself set it to the appropriate socket configuration and then go ahead and insert it through the motherboard itself it'll go right through the pcb in most circumstances then go on the other side and secure the back plate to your pcb by using the standoff screws for the intel configuration and uh, once you have all four screws securely in place you could then take the water block and pump which already has thermal compound installed and place it directly onto the cpu and right on top of those standoff screws and once you have the cooler in the right place you can go ahead and secure it with the thumb screws included into the package and make sure you're tightening each screw in an even fashion that way you have continuous contact throughout the surface area from the cpu to the cooler itself next what we're going to do is install our dual 120 millimeter fans to the radiator and we're just going to use the long screws included with the cooler and you're going to go right through the fan itself to secure it directly onto the radiator we're setting up the fans for exhaust so we're just pushing out hot air outside the case and then we're going to pull in cold air from the front of the case in a separate case fan now what we're going to do is just open up the top of the case and we're going to secure our 240 millimeter radiator to the top of the case using the screws provided in the Corsair kit but once you have the radiator secured to the top of the case you want to go ahead and connect all your fan and pump power connector directly into the uh, place where it says a CPU cooler on the motherboard itself so that's way we're having everything powered through that one connection and you can also connect the USB connection from the water block to an available internet internal USB 2.0 connection that's typically located where all your front panel connections go and uh, that way you have all the features for the Corsair link system where you can monitor everything about your cooling in your desktop. Now next we're going to connect our power supply to the case so uh, to install it on the Corsair 780T it just goes at the bottom you can use the four screws provided either in the case or the power supply to fasten it directly onto the case and then you want to route your 8 pin CPU power connection to the 8 pin CPU power connector located near the cpu itself and then you can also plug in your 24 pin power connection to power the whole motherboard at this time you can also connect any of your case fans directly onto the power supply itself as well i'm just going to be routing all my power connections for the case fans at the back of the case now it's time to connect our gpu uh, to the motherboard and you want to simply find an available pcie 16x slot and uh, go ahead and insert your graphics card right there you can then secure the graphics card to the case and motherboard Board itself by screwing the card uh, directly onto the left hand side using the same screws that were used to uh, hold in the PCI Express covers. Next you can connect the dual 8 pin PCI Express power connections from the uh, graphics card to the power supply itself. And winding down the setup, you can finally install the Intel add-in card uh, by uh, just plugging it into an available PCI Express connection. So very similar procedure to installing a graphics card. And the nice thing is you don't need any kind of power connections because the PCIe basically powers the entire SSD through the motherboard. And once you've done that, you can give yourself a big pat on the back because you've completed the entire build. All you need to do now is connect a keyboard, mouse, and a monitor, and perhaps uh, insert a, a USB key with an operating operating system and install your OS. Pretty simple and straightforward build over here and it probably can be done in under 45 minutes even if you're a novice. Okay so now let's move on to some performance figures and benchmarks. Now in terms of the overclock I managed to easily overclock the 6700K to about 4.8 gigahertz. I had to increase the core voltage to about 1.4 volts and it's pretty stable at this current configuration. At load it uh, roughly it hits about 77 degrees degrees celsius never saw it really past that point but i'm sure if you run prime 95 for a couple of hours it'll probably get hotter the cooler is not the best out there uh, i'm sure you can get better performance out of a custom water cooling loop but definitely not bad for an all-in-one solution and certainly stable for a 4.8 gigahertz overclock now in terms of the peak power consumption when playing grand theft auto 5 for about half an hour the entire rig consumed about 382 
22 watts in terms of what I observed uh, through my meter. So that's definitely not bad. Pretty darn power efficient for the kind of configuration that it has right now. Now in terms of the CPU specific benchmarks, we're going to start with uh, Cinebench R15. And with this overclock setting, I'm getting about 1035 points. Fairly good. This is certainly a lot faster than the 4770K that came out last year. And if you take a look at the Geekbench uh, 3 results, you'll also find uh, very impressive results over here in terms of the multi-core score of just under 20,000 points and a single core score of about 5,088 points. Now, probably one of the most astonishing things about this computer is that Intel 750 series PCIe base SSD. If you took a look at these results that I got from Crystal Dismark, you can see that it's getting over one gigabyte per second in terms of uh, write speeds and well over 2.3 gigabytes per second in terms of the read speeds. That's absolutely insane. Never really came across a PC that was this fast in terms of its read and write sequential performance. So in terms of loading up games and application and installing stuff, it takes no time at all. And it's very, very impressive. And you can see where your money goes when you get one of these PCIe based flash memory systems. Now moving on, let's talk about the graphical capabilities of this computer. Now, based on the Unigen's Heaven benchmark at 2560 by 1440, eight times AA at uh, ultra settings in terms of details, we're getting 64.2 average frames per second with a score of about 16 oh wait very impressive to see there and in terms of real life a gameplay performance with a far cry 4 with a no anti-aliasing at 4k resolutions you're getting 45.2 average frames per second according to fraps 76.2 frames per second in terms of quad hd and 92 frames per second in terms of full hd moving on to grand theft auto 5 with high detail settings you're getting about 48.7 frames per second in terms of 4k 56.2 frames per second in terms of quad HD and we get a score of about 79.2 average frames per second at full HD. Now moving on to Battlefield 4 at pretty much maxed out settings we're almost getting 60 frames per second at ultra HD resolutions about 80 frames per second in quad HD and about 114.5 frames per second in full HD so definitely capable of playing most of your gaming titles that you're going to come across at very very high playable frame rates even at the 4k resolution so with that gigabyte a 980 Ti you're pretty much covered for all of your high-end gaming needs for a long-term basis and that's one thing that's always nice about getting a high-end graphics card like this. But on that guys that's really it for this 4k epic build guide video. If you like this video please give us a thumbs up and if you plan on making a, a computer like this definitely check out the description down below you'll find the detailed information about pricing, about specifications, everything you need to know about this PC. Now if you want to make videos like this possible go through our Amazon links. It doesn't cost you anything extra but it just keeps everything afloat and we definitely love to thank all you guys for helping us uh, keep this thing uh, going and uh, definitely love to thank you for your subscription your likes and your support through our amazon affiliate links and if this computer is a little bit too uh, higher end in terms of budget for you guys i actually have another build guide series where uh, we do a little bit more of a budget oriented pc something that's around half the price of this so definitely check out the channel uh, for that video also uh, that video will be in the description down below but thank you again for watching we'll see you later take care